Please be seated. Come on. I want all those that are young and hard, especially the children, to come up at this time. Come on. Come on, children. Put some flowers in here. Put some flowers in here. Put some flowers in here. Get some flowers and put them in here. Put some more in there. Come on, put some flowers in. Till all the flowers are gone, put them in there. Come on. Come on, everybody. Put flowers in. Put flowers in there. Come on. And then go take a seat. Okay. Put it in there, Maya. Put some flowers in, everybody. It's awfully messy, isn't it? Look at all the flowers on the floor. Here we go. Take some flowers. Here you go, Sebastian. There you go, buddy. Put another one in, James. Way to go, Will. Here we go. There you go. Way to go. Who wants some more flowers? Okay, everybody. Hey, uh, uh -huh. happy Easter. Happy Easter, Father Steve. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Okay, hey, isn't it great? Isn't it great? You feel good? Do you believe? Y'all believe? Y'all all believe? Yes. Well, say it loudly. Yes. yes. Okay, good. Good. This is Easter Sunday. Did y'all? Who went to Easter egg hunting? Anybody? Shout out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Did y'all go Easter egg hunting all throughout the week in other places? Anybody else? You know, they've been doing Easter egg hunts for months and months. I think they started after Halloween. Okay. Here's the deal. Oh, that's that other holiday. Okay. But here's the deal. Hey, today is Easter. Y'all know that, don't you? Today is Easter. Not any other day. This is it. This is the day the Lord broke free of a dark prison. And God made it happen. Jesus rose from the dead. Do y'all believe? Y'all believe that? Jesus rose from the dead and made all this possible. New life. That's what this cross is about. The cross has been replaced with flowers. New life. Okay, everybody just kind of take a seat. Because I've got a few more things to say. And then, I've got something special for you. Okay. All right, this is wonderful. I'm glad you wore your hard hat, Sebastian. Because let me tell you, this is dangerous stuff we're doing here. Dangerous. All right, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Have y'all, who saw Willy Wonka? Just plain old Willy Wonka, the first movie, right? Do y'all see that movie? You didn't see that movie? Dang it. I forget the children's oh. sermon. Y'all haven't seen the movie. I, there's a point in that movie, in Willy Wonka, where Charlie, y'all remember Charlie and Willy Wonka? Who remembers Charlie? Okay, you remember Charlie? Remember Charlie? Remember what Willy Wonka said to him? Do you believe, Charlie? Do you believe? You remember that? Do you believe? It was hard for them to believe because it was such a mystical place, right? All these things happening that they wouldn't have seen anywhere else. And he says, do you believe? And when he does believe, and all the others wouldn't, what does he get? What did he get? Do you remember what he got when he believed? He got the whole chocolate factory, right? He got the whole thing. That's what Jesus did for us. Jesus wants us to have the whole thing. Do you believe, he says? If you believe, you can have everything. Because I rose from the dead for you. Now, I got you some Willy Wonka treats over here, so come on. Whoa. Oh yeah, here we go. And you're, and you're in luck because I have lots of them. You can have two. Two, two, two. Oh, get some Willy Wonka. I have more in my office. I have more in my office, so if you come see me after this service, I'll give you more. Uh, I failed to bring them. I know your parents want you to have more. More, Brian, more. Uh-oh, you knocked one over, Will. It's okay. Life is messy. Oh, sorry. Okay. Here, there's two for you. You got something you want me to give out? No, we're okay. Thank you. Huh? What? They're good. They're good. Yeah. Vincent, you are the man, buddy. I may need some out of the office, Rick, but I think I'm going to be okay. There's two for you. 
Okay. We're gonna have enough. Oh, let's see one. Okay. Jenna, here's one for you. All right. One for you. Two for you. Go sit down. Everybody go sit down. Ellen, it's so good to see you. I missed you. And you will you give me a hug? Father, make us the masters of ourselves, that we might become the servants of others. Take our minds and think with them. Take our lips and speak through them. And take our hearts and set them on fire. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. You know, these services throughout Holy Week, there's always something going wrong. Have you ever noticed that? I mean, always. It doesn't matter what we do. We've been preparing for months and months for this. I know the choir has... Choir, stand up. Come on, stand up. <laughs> they did that. You know why they did this? Because they believe. They believe, right? Yeah. Right, am I right? Yes. Altar guild. Any altar guild people here? Stand up, altar guild. Any altar guild people? They got to be some. I know. I saw Grace Lowe. She's an altar guild, isn't she? Stand up, Grace. Just let them see one person from the altar guild. Okay, anyway, there are all Arthur Gill people here. They're just shy. They don't want to claim. They do it because they believe. Right? The people that decorate this place, the Flower Guild, didn't they do a great job? Are there any Flower Guild people here? Stand up if you're in the Flower Guild. Somebody? Did he? Oh, there's one. And they didn't do it because they want to claim. They did it because they believe. That's why they did it. Are you looking for Jesus? Are you looking for Jesus today? I hope you are. Because if you are, this is a good place to start. Do you believe? You know, we always have something go wrong. I'm telling you. I, I can't even count all the things. We got two acolytes today that we just picked out of the crowd. Look at that. Somebody's phone is ringing. If that's Jesus, give me that phone. I want to hear. I want to talk. I really do. All right, now listen to me. Listen to me. Yeah, that's right. We trained our incense. That's right. That's right. Scarlett, no. you want to preach? Okay. <laughs> we, we, we trained the incense thur thurible, thur thurifer today. Jeff, great. Jeff, who rose from the dead himself. Come here, give me a hug. Come here, come here, come here, give me a hug. Thank you. And why did you do this? You did it. You did it because you believed, didn't you? He did it because he believed. That's why we're here today, because we believe. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Lord is risen indeed. How, how many had to go get a new tag or something at the D, DV, is it D, DVM? Who had to go get one recently? Does this feel a little different than when you were waiting for your number to be called? A lot different, doesn't it? Who all, like me, waited to the last second to do their taxes? Anybody in here? And, and, and then I had to write a check. This feels a little different than that, doesn't it? It feels a little different than you felt when you were writing that check and going, I love my country, but I don't know if I love it this much, you know? Do you believe? It's our story today. Our story is about resurrection. I love this mess up here. I, somebody, I don't know. I don't know a whole lot. I learn things on the on the fly most of the time. I know some of you figured that out. And somebody said, "Are we going to march in and put the flowers in at the procession?" I thought, "Wow, why didn't I think of that?" Right? And so I just decided we'd bring the cross down here and we decorate it right here. It looks great, doesn't it? We had a bunch of kids out there hunting Easter eggs. It was like magic, right? Mystical. And the story that we read today is about the mystical reality of this event. Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And nobody could quite believe it, right? They just couldn't believe it. They were gone to the, the uh, tomb to see this dead body there. 
right? I mean, that's what they were doing. Isn't that what you read about earlier? They're going to get a dead body. And there was Jesus, risen from the dead. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And they didn't know what to make of it. They didn't know these kind of things were possible, even though Jesus told them this was going to happen. He said, I'm going to do this. God is going to raise me from the dead. And he did. And these people began to see something they'd never seen before. And they believed. And we're here today because of them. But you know, this is one day. It doesn't have to end here. Are we looking for Jesus today? I hope we are. But we don't want to just look for him on Easter Sunday. We want to look for him throughout the year, don't we? Don't we, choir? Yes. Well, say it. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. we do. Yes. Yes. We want to look for Jesus all the time. You know why? Because Jesus Christ is always there for us. Always. But we don't, do we? We don't. A lot of times we don't, do we, Roy? Say it loud, Roy. No, sir. No, sir. And the reason is, Roy, because we got it made. Cushy, right? When we, you know when we look for Jesus the most? When we're lost. When we're afraid. When we feel all alone. When we're failing. When our life isn't working out the way that we wanted it to. That's when we look for Jesus. That's when we really need Jesus in our life. What we really want is we want a friend, right? We're... we're feeling like we're all alone and we're thinking a friend would do but we know a friend's not just good enough is it because a friend might say oh it's going to be okay i used to say to my ex-business partner all the time when things would just get like they normally are around here and i'd say i'd say oh pat my mother used to say it's all going to work out for the best and he gets so mad he gets spitting mad i don't want to hear that again i'd go well, I mean, I'm, trust me on this. It's going to work out for the best. Just pay attention here. The story's not over yet, right? And he wouldn't believe me. But I knew that it would because I believed. My mother taught me. But I forgot. I went off and wandered around, right? But Jesus got a hold of me. Thanks be to God. Jesus got a hold of me when I was 24 and, and changed my life. So I know that Jesus is alive and alive today and available to us today, right now. Y'all believe? You believe? Yes. Good. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. My, my friend John Williams and I did a clinical pastoral education together, and if you really want to go through the paces, take clinical pastoral education. And right, Father Rick, it's, just, it's, a, it's a bear of a course. And, and you have to work in some clinical setting. That's why they call it clinical pastoral education. And we worked in a big hospital in Austin, Texas. And he had the neurology floor as one of his floors. And as he was wandering down the hall one day, we were horrible chaplains. I mean, we, I had radiology and I'd go by and I'd see all these people in there fixing to get radiated and I'd go, you know. And, <laughs> Well, I mean, they didn't need me in there. That's the way I'd look at it. I mean, that was horrible, wasn't it? And he was going down the neurology floor, and uh, he was doing his usual thing. He really didn't like to go in a room unless he really felt invited. And he saw a door open, and he heard this voice coming out of the door, and it, the room was all black, and he said, the voice said, Help! Help! You're the only hope I have! And, and he he got a little spooked, and he thought about leaving, running, you know, let me get out of here, I'll go find Steve, we'll sit out in the stairwell and forget about this. And then he heard again, help, help, you're the only hope I got. And, and so eventually he thought, Shh, maybe I need to go in there, because I'm the only hope she has, right? So he went into the dark room, and he saw this woman, and she was over in the corner, and she was in a wheelchair, and she had her hands strapped to the wheelchair. Y'all ever seen that before? You ever had that happen to you? It's horrible, right? I've been, seen it many times. People go to the hospital, they get disoriented, they put a bunch of tubes in them, IVs, things that, yes! Hallelujah, Christ is risen! And they have a, 
And they have all these tubes in them, right? And they don't want to be there, right? They want to be free, and they start trying to jerk them out. And so what do they do? They tie them down, right? They tie them down. You had that happen to you, didn't you? I saw you. And that's a horrible place to be. Tied, strapped down, unable to get out. That was the way it was for Jesus. He was in a tomb. He was wrapped up. I had a, met a new friend this week as a Medal of Honor winner. He spent six years in the Hanoi Hilton during the Vietnam War with John McCain and Jeremiah Denton. And the first things he said to his wife when he got to call her and got her on the phone was, Honey, I would have called you, but I was all tied up. <laughs> he still had a sense of humor. But Jesus was all tied up. And when you get like that, you want to be free, right? And this woman was like that. She was all tied up. And she said to my friend, You're the only hope I have. And he knew he was on the neurology floor. He knew that people on the neurology floor get there for a reason, right? They have, usually have something going on in their head that's not quite right. And he knew that she might be on drugs, but he also knew that there was something real about that message. You're the only hope I have. I need help. I need help. Isn't that the way we get sometimes when we get really down and things aren't working for us? We need help. I want help. I'm, I need somebody. I need somebody to help me. I'm afraid. What we really need is we need our lenses widened a little bit. You know, because at those moments they become real narrow, right? And that's all we can see. And that's the way it was for these people that came to the tomb that day, their, their view of reality was really small. I, I've known some mystics in my day. I have. And I know there's some here today. Don't identify yourself. Because I know it's hard to do that, right? If you're a mystic and you identify yourself, even in this small little community, there's going to people look at you and they're going to say you're weird, right? And they'll look at you differently from then on out. So just tell me later. Y'all come up to me later and tell me. But, but I'm going to tell you, I, I like that. I'm kind of a mystic myself. I know a screwball mystic, but I'm still a mystic nevertheless. Do you believe this really happened? Do you really believe this happened? Let me, let me see. Y'all believe it really happened? How about all of you out there? Y'all believe it really happened? Y'all believe it really happened, all of you out there? Yes. 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 Father Ricky, every morning when Rick is in town and he stays with me, we get up in the morning and we say, Lord, thank you for this new day. I mean, I know I'm going to die someday, and it's probably sooner rather than later, you know. Every day I wake up with a new set of aches and pains, right? Is that, Terry, that's your deal? Yeah. Bob? Yeah. yeah. It's going to get worse, isn't it? <laughs> But every morning we get up and we greet the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Together, we do it together. Lord, thank you for this day. And we talk to the Lord just like he's there with us. And he is. We want you to use us today. Thank you for the work that you've already prepared for us. We say that. We say those words, don't we? Can I hear an amen over there? Amen. Yeah. And, and, we, and we do it because we believe. We believe God has planned a day for us and God has exciting things for us. It may not be easy. I mean, I became a Christian because Jesus got a hold of me and I believed. I believed it was real then. I thought it was just made up stories after a while. I mean, I got to be an adult and I thought all those stories I heard in Sunday school, they just made those stories up. You know, I believe in Jesus, but, you know, he died 2,000 years ago. Yeah, I believe he rose from the dead, you know, he went to heaven, I got all that. But I didn't believe it was real for me right then and there. But when Jesus got a hold of me, I believe. And that belief led me to want to know more. I wanted more of the gift. I wanted to experience that mystical reality that those people on Easter Sunday experienced and later I mean, can you imagine somebody walking through a locked room or walking on water or doing extraordinary things like raising people from the dead or giving blind people sight? 
But we don't see that stuff, do we? Yet, it happened. Jesus was able to do things that had never been done before. And here's the good news. In the Gospel of John, the same Gospel we read today, before He went up to be crucified, He said to the apostles, all these things that I do, you can do them too. In fact, you're going to do more than I did. Look it up. It's, it's in there. I'm not going to tell you where because I want you to read the whole thing. But He says it in there. He says, you can do it too. And the reason you can do it is because I am going to the Father and I'm going to send my Holy Spirit to be among you. And that Spirit will enable you to live in the kingdom of heaven. And that's good news. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. But for the world, it's foolishness. Hell, you're the only hope I have. And my friend John sat in the room with this woman, knowing that his help was inadequate, but Jesus' help was sufficient. And so he sat and prayed, Lord Jesus, help this woman. If you don't believe yet, I want to tell you, all of us here right now is evidence that Jesus lives. Amen. We wouldn't be here just because we want to look pretty for all of you. I mean, I can't even fake it enough to make you think I look pretty. Now, Father Rick, that's another story. He is a closed horse. We wouldn't do this just because we think we have to, right? I know some of you are drug here. I know some of you that the only reason you're able to be here right now is because you're on drugs, right? <laughs> But there's a whole lot more to it than that. We can have life, and we can have life in abundance greater than we ever imagined when we were in school, greater than our teachers were ever to describe to us, even if we learn the mysteries of the universe and how the planets align themselves and all that. We can experience life greater than that. Greater, I believe, I believe. Because Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I read, a, I, read, I read a bunch of books during Lent as part of my discipline. And one of the things I read was this big book on Vince Lombardi. I'm going to give it to you. I want you to read it. You got it already. Good. Way to go. Way to go, man. Let me show it to him. This is a great man here, Vince Lombardi. He was a coach. He was a coach of the Green Bay Packers. Y'all know that? Some of you know that, right? A football coach. You know, not, not all football coaches are great men, but this was a great man. But he was also a man that had demons, twisted, brokenness, all sorts of stuff. But he rose above it because he believed. And he wasn't just believing in himself. He went to church every day, every day, every morning he got up. He, when he moved to Washington, he was in Green Bay for 10 years. 10 years as a head football coach, that's all. Not like 100 years, you know. Everybody thinks he was a coach forever. He was just there 10 years, and then he only got to coach one more year after that in Washington, D.C. And when he did, he thought he was powerful enough. He went to the priest, and he said, uh, could you move your service to 7 o'clock so I can come in every morning and do Mass before I go to work? And the priest had looked at him and said, Mr. Lombardi, I know you're a powerful man and you're really successful, but the guy I work for trumps you. Okay? <laughs> We're going to keep it at 7.30. Because he believed. He wasn't perfect. He was a great man because he believed. He had this thing, you know, he was a winner. You know that, don't you? And we like to associate with winners, don't we? That's why they write books about people like him. Because he was a winner. I mean, we're, we're in Alabama, right? It, you know, you wrote, you're going to, I mean, you move here. So who moved here from other states, right? Wasn't one, one of the first things that people ask you said, who are you go for, Alabama or Auburn, right? And you're thinking, have I ended up in Kansas? You know, you're not in Kansas anymore, right? 
And, and, and you got to believe, right? You, you got to have one or the other. You got to choose. And people go, no, not me. I'm not going to do it, right? But the reason that we choose a team usually is because we want to be associated with winners, right? Right? Right. And, and, but those of us that really, really, really believe, we, ch we choose one team and stick with them, right? And, and that, they're always winners. That's how we look. Well, let me tell you, Jesus Christ rose from the dead. He is the greatest winner of all. You say to Jesus, I want, I want my life to be with you, Jesus. I want, to, I want to be on your team. And you'll be associated with the greatest team that's ever created. The church of God. The church of Jesus Christ given to us because of this singular event in history. Jesus Christ rose from the dead, strapped down, locked away, and he came back. One of the things that Father Rick and I have, uh, I told, told us last time, I'm going to tell it again, but we love Bob Dylan's song, The Foot of Pride. And the basic essence of that is, there ain't no coming back when the foot of pride comes down. And the foot of pride is Jesus. And Jesus' foot of pride came down when he was resurrected from the dead. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. There's no, nothing can separate us from Jesus Christ if we choose to have Jesus Christ in our life. Nothing. The love of God through Jesus Christ can't be removed. It was sealed in the victory over death. Victory. That's how you feel today. You feel victory. Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Nothing. Not fear. Not loneliness. Not depression. Not death. Not loss. Rejection or abandonment. None of that can divide us from the love of God through Jesus Christ. And that is good news. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah.